Hello everyone. In this lesson, we're going to be covering list and dictionary comprehensions in Python. Populating data structures like lists and dictionaries with information is a common task in Python, but explicitly typing out all of the values you want to put into a list or dictionary can be very time consuming. So it is often easier and quicker to populate a list or dictionary programmatically, such as by writing a for loop and then on each iteration of the loop, adding something to your list or dictionary. So we'll start by giving an example of how we could go about populating a new list just with integers from 1 to 100 using a for loop. So first we're going to define an empty list, my list, and to do that we just set it equal to empty brackets here. And then we could populate this using a for loop like so. We make a for loop, and then for each number in the range of numbers we want to populate it with, so for every number in the range from 0 to 101, so that will be from 0 to 100, for all of those numbers, my list dot append that number. So basically add that number to the list. So let's run this and print the result. We can see that we did add all of those numbers. So defining an empty list like this and then using a for loop to append into the list, this does work for populating a list, but Python offers a quicker shorthand notation known as a list comprehension to achieve the same result with a bit less code. So let's now use a list comprehension to do the exact same thing as what we did above, but without having to write a standalone for loop. To make a list comprehension, you define a new list similar to how we did above when we made an empty list. So we're gonna say my list equals something, but instead of having empty square brackets here where we defined an empty list and then we filled the empty list later, we actually put our logic for filling a list directly into the brackets. So the list comprehension itself looks something like this. Instead of having a for loop that later on appends things into an empty list, we just put the for loop logic right into the brackets. So basically what this is saying here is for each number in this range, take that number, put it here, and make it part of this list. So this will ultimately do the exact same thing as the for loop construction we saw above. It's just a quicker and easier way of doing the same thing that only requires one line of code. An added benefit is that list comprehensions tend to be a little bit more computationally efficient than using an explicit for loop as well. So let's run this and see that we did get the exact same list as we did before, just using a list comprehension this time. Now note that in a list comprehension, the value that you want to append into the list comes first. In the case above, we put number first because that is what we were putting into the actual list we were creating. And note that you can actually include logical checks for your list comprehension after the for statement. So if we wanted to, we could rewrite our previous construction to only make a list of numbers that are even numbers by making an if statement after the for statement that checks if the modulo or remainder of the number divided by two is equal to zero. That checks if it's even or not. So we'll show another list comprehension here that's going to do the exact same thing, except it's also going to then check if the number is even, and it will only store those that are even numbers. So let's walk through this one here. Again, we're going to define a new variable that's going to be equal to a list, so that's what the square brackets are. And the list comprehension itself is saying, well, again, we want the numbers for each number in this range, but also if the number mod 2 is equal to 0. So it's filtering, essentially, this for loop. All the values we're going through in this range are also going to be filtered then by this if statement that we put after it. So when we run this, it'll do another list comprehension, but the numbers that are spit out here are only going to be numbers that conform to this additional if logical check. So we should get all of the even numbers in that range now. It is also possible to include multiple for loops in a list comprehension and do something with constituents from each iterable that 
you're iterating over with each of the two different for loops. So I'll give an example of how you might do that here. We're going to create a new list and it's going to be assigned to this list comprehension. A plus B. So these are the two things we're extracting and we are adding them together. In this case, we're going to be extracting letters or strings. So we're just going to be adding two letters together, pasting them together. So A plus B for A in life. So we're extracting each of these letters in order. That's going to be A. And then we're also going to say for B in study. So we're also extracting all of these letters. And what this will do is it'll go through everything in life, each letter one by one, and then go through each letter in study. And for every one of those combinations, it will add those letters together and then use those combinations to populate this list. So by running this, we're going to end up with every single combination of letters between life and study. So since there are four letters in life and five letters in study, I suppose that would result in what four times five different combinations. So we should have 20 different combinations of two letters here in our final list. So let's run that and see that that is the case. So this is a relatively simple example of a construction like this. But if you were to pass in iterables here that were larger, you could end up with a resulting list that is quite large. Say if A was an interval of size 100 and B was also size 100. Well, every combination of that, it's going to be A times B then in size and you'd end up with 10,000 items in your list. It is also possible to nest one list comprehension inside of another. We will give an example of doing that below. We're going to take the list comprehension we made here, this combined one, and then nest it inside of another. So below note that this long list comprehension, it actually goes off the end here. This part of it, A plus B for A in life for B in study, that is the same list comprehension as above. So we're nesting that inside of another list comprehension, which is saying we want to get the second letter, so letters one for each letter in this whole list comprehension we made before. So essentially what this is doing is it's extracting the second letter in each of the items in this list we made above with the other list comprehension. So this is just an example of how you could make a nested list comprehension. So let's run this and see what we get back. We can see that the list comprehension stripped off the second letters. And in this case, because of the way we constructed the data, it just stripped off study, 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 study. So while you can make nested list comprehensions like this and achieve a huge amount in a single line of code, it is actually probably better not to do this too much because if you include too many nested structures on a single line, it can end up getting pretty long and verbose and say run off the edge of the page like we had the problem with above. And it just ends up becoming pretty difficult to understand and read for anybody that didn't write the code in the first place. So I would say in general, it is better to avoid the temptation to create these sorts of convoluted one liners and instead write a series of a few shorter, more readable operations that yield the same result, but are easier to read for people so that they can see the sequence of steps you're following to get at your end result. So we could have done the same thing as above without nesting list comprehensions by doing two different list comprehension constructions in a row. So an example of how we could do that is we'd start by making our first list called combined by using that same construction that we did. And then for our second list comprehension, we can just operate on this combined list that we already made instead of creating this entire combined list as a list comprehension that's nested within another one. So for this list, we could have saved this intermediate step combined as a new list. And then we could have done a second list comprehension over this already saved combined list, like so, letters one for letters in combined. This is the exact same construction we used before, except now instead of using this 
entire list comprehension, we just substituted this variable name that we already stored it into here. And it's just easier to read than doing a nested construction that creates a very long line that's harder to parse through. So similar to list comprehensions, you can also populate dictionaries using a construction called dictionary comprehensions. And it follows a similar structure to list comprehensions, except that since dictionaries include both keys and values, you need to extract both keys and values when you're creating the logic for it. So first we'll show an example of how you might go about populating a dictionary using a for loop. And then we'll show how we could have done the same thing using a dictionary comprehension, but in one line that's a bit cleaner and more efficient. So let's start off by defining some words that we want to use as keys for a dictionary. So here are going to be the words. We're now going to define an empty dictionary, so word length dictionary. All this is going to hold is some words as keys and then the lengths of each of the words, the number of letters, as the values. So we'll start by assigning this an empty dictionary. And then we're going to loop through each word in this words list. So for word in words, we are going to add to our word length dictionary that word and set the value to the length, len, of the word. And after we do that, we should have populated this dictionary with these three keys, with each of the values set to the length of the keys. So let's run that and see that we did successfully do that. Now let's see how we could have done the same thing with a dictionary comprehension and get rid of that explicit for loop outside of the construction of the dictionary. So here again, we're going to define the words we're using to make the dictionary. And then we're going to make this second word length dictionary using a dictionary comprehension. Similar to the list comprehension, we first start by making open and closing braces as if we were making a new dictionary. So before we just had an empty dictionary and then we populated it later. In this case, we're going to actually make the empty dictionary, but then put a bunch of logic inside of it to do the dictionary comprehension. So in doing a dictionary comprehension, you have to include both a key and a value from whatever data structure you're looping over to construct it. So in this case, we want to extract the word as the key. Then you put in a colon to separate what the key is from what the value is going to be. And then for the value, we're going to do the length of the word or len word. So this part defines what you're actually going to be storing in the new dictionary. And then what comes after it is the logic of what you're iterating over. So we are extracting the dictionary information we're storing here for each word in the words list that we made above. So basically all together it's saying store each word as a key, then the length of the word as the value for every word in our words list. So when we run this, it will result in the exact same dictionary as we made above, just a little more efficient than doing it with the standalone for loop. Now it is quite common to want to create a dictionary from the items in two different ordered sequences where one sequence contains the keys you want to use to make the dictionary, and the other sequence contains the corresponding values. So if you want to do that, pairing up items from two different sequences, there is a Python built-in function called zip that lends itself naturally to doing that. Basically what zip does is it takes any number of iterables and then groups each item in an element-wise fashion in tuples. So let's give an example of what that would look like. We'll start by defining two lists we want to zip together. So we're just going to use words again and their lengths. And these are both sequences of length three. And then if we zip these together, so we're saying pairs equals zip of words and word lengths. What that's going to do, it's going to take the first item life and then pair it up with the first item in this list. So life and four will be paired up. Then is and two will be paired up and study and five will be paired up. And after we create these pairs, we can loop through each item in pairs and print it out just to see that we did end up pairing up all of those items in element wise order. So tuples like these extracted by zip lend themselves naturally to becoming a dictionary because essentially what we're left with here are key value pairs. Here are our keys and here are the values. So we could have used zip on these two pre-existing lists to construct a dictionary just like the one we created above. So we'll give an example of how we could have used zip in a dictionary comprehension below. 
We'll start again by defining the exact same lists that we used before, but this time we're going to extract our key value pairs from that zip construction. So we're going to say define a new variable to hold our dictionary. Again, we have to do the open and closing curly braces to define a dictionary. And then we're going to say we want the key value pairs for each key value tuple in our zip of these two lists. So basically what this is doing is it's running zip on these two lists to make a bunch of tuples that match up the first element with the first element, second with the second, etc. And then for each of those tuples, it's extracting the first item and the second item, and then saving those in a dictionary as the keys and the values. So when we run this, we will get the same dictionary as we have been making, just with using zip and a dictionary comprehension. So to wrap up, list and dictionary comprehensions provide a convenient syntax for populating lists and dictionaries more efficiently and with less code than standard loops. Once you have your data loaded into NumPy arrays and pandas data frames, however, you can often avoid using looping constructions altogether because those data structures tend to have functions that operate in a vectorized manner, meaning they perform operations on every item in the data structure all at once without having to do any explicit looping. So at this point in the guide, we have covered all of the basics of Python data structures and programming constructs that we're going to need. So for the remainder of the guide, we're going to focus on doing data analysis. So in the next lesson, we're going to use Python to explore a real world data set, namely the Titanic disaster data set. We're going to be using this as a motivating example of showing how to load in data, explore data, clean data, and a whole bunch of different topics related to getting data ready for analysis. If you found this video useful, drop a like, hit subscribe, and I'll see you again next time.